Hi, what's up and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm showing you how I painted these three different versions of wintry trees. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. So this was the result of a mini practice session I had before painting the final piece for Paint With Me December. And I'll link that video for you if you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm just mixing up the colors here for the trees and I am using a mix of a couple different colors and I'm not the most rigid color mixer if that makes sense like I don't have a formula each time I, I sometimes eyeball it and so sometimes my color mixes are kind of crazy but it works and so in this particular uh, color that I'm mixing up for the the trees I'm using a thalo green French ultramarine burnt sienna and Payne's gray all of them are Daniel Smith extra fine watercolors and it's kind of repetitive I looked at it afterwards and using Payne's gray and ultramarine and burnt sienna are are repetitive because a French ultramarine and a burnt sienna are going to create a gray and then I'm also adding a Payne's gray to it but in my mind, I think it, the Payne's Gray added a little bit of coolness that I wanted to the color. And so I just wanted to give you the colors that I used in case you're trying to replicate it. But I don't think you actually need to use the Payne's Gray if you're using the other three colors. And then what I'm doing basically is starting with what I thought was the easiest tree. And the easiest version of the tree is basically without snow. And so I think technically this is a spruce tree. Um, and so I looked up some images of wintry trees and my strokes are mimicking the shape of the leaves um, or, and the branches. And I know I'm not using the best technical terms, but visually, if you look at a, a photo of a spruce tree or a wintry forest, um, a lot of times that you'll see these types of trees and they have branches and leaves that kind of curl upwards. So I'm sort of just referencing the photos and capturing the essence of the tree. I'm leave, making sure to leave uh, white in between. Leaving the white really helps you see the image of a tree. So if I had filled it in, and I didn't leave any white pockets. It would just look like a triangle or a point or something weird like a blob. And so really what makes this tree and what makes trees in general when you're painting them this way is by leaving those white areas. So they're very important. So I think that this is the easiest approach to painting a tree. And what I was trying to do for myself in this practice version is to paint on top of a wet background and so you could, can see that I had laid down some wet wash of a very very light blue and then I wanted to see if uh, timing wise I could practice putting down paint while the paper was still sort of damp but not so wet that the paint the paint of the tree would bleed. And so you can see that I think I was quite successful. Um, it's almost bordering on too dry, I would say, because I wanted it to feather a little bit more than it did. But otherwise, I think this was a very successful try at this first tree. And so then I moved on to the second one. And you can see that while I was waiting for the background wash to dry, I had penciled in um, this second tree. And I penciled it in because this one has snow and I wanted to paint a tree with snow on it. And this is actually the main purpose of this practice session was I wanted to try and paint a tree that had snow on its on its branches. And so the pencil marks for me are helping me block out the areas that I'm going to be painting in. And the trick with this I discovered is when painting these trees with snow, you're painting around the snow and then you're allowing the snow to stay the white of the paper. And then our mind is filling in the details. So when we see it, even though I didn't actually paint the snow, our brains can fill in the gaps. And so in this tree, it's important not to actually paint the shape of the leaves, but you're painting the leftover shape of what you see when there's snow on it. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you look really closely at a snow covered spruce tree, you'll see that the shapes are nothing like the ones that I painted on the left. You, you're not seeing the whole branch, you're seeing that negative space, the leftover space. And so what I did with this was after I was done painting 
the actual negative space where you can see the tree and the snow is not covering it. I went back in with some clean water and I just lightly added some areas of water to allow the leaves to bleed. So it's sort of creating more of a hint of snow. And I thought this was quite successful in its own way. And so that was an interesting technique that I attempted and I think that I would use again. And I actually don't think I did this in the paint with me challenge because I only had a few trees and I thought it looked okay at the time and so I didn't do it there but in the future if I put were to paint this again I would probably do that technique and so now when I'm done with these two I just went back and I added in the trunk and then little areas where you might be able to see the trunk peeking through in the body of the tree and I think that's important to add a little bit of detail and so I did that and I also did it um Oh, well, I waited to do this with the first tree. So again, it's a timing thing. So the first tree that I painted is still wet. And I knew at this point that I didn't want to go back in and add in the trunk because it would just get lost. And so I just moved on to the third version. And the third version is basically a sort of a combination of wet on wet painting and layering. And basically, um, I love, this is why I love watercolors and I love painting this way. And so I was most excited to try this version where I'm just using the paint and letting it spread and bloom and do its thing. And then I'll come back and add some more detail. And this creates a lot of distance. So the fuzzy, fuzzy trees in the background that are you know, kind of bleeding into each other like this, end up looking like they're foggy or in mist, and they look like they're more in, at a distance. And then when you come back and you layer on the the hard edges of a tree after the paper is dry, it ends up looking more like those are in the foreground. And so I'm doing a blend of the two, and here I'm really, I really am just experimenting, and I wanted to come back in and add a little bit of detail when I knew the paper and the paint was still wet so that it would be sort of in the middle so it's not crisp detail like you're seeing in the first two trees and it's not completely lost and abstract uh, it's sort of in the middle and so I really like this kind of look and I think it lends itself to a level of detail that's really interesting in watercolors that I really believe you can only achieve in watercolors and so that's what I'm doing here so I am basically coming back in and then you can see that as I'm doing this the tops of these last trees that are in the front are feathering more than I would like them to um, into the wetter area of the paint and then the bottom is actually more layered and what I want is I want the I wanted the more crisp edges of this tr these trees in the foreground. So what I need needed to do and what I end up doing here is waiting for the paper to dry a little bit more. And when it's drier, then I can come back and put in more details and I can add in those tops of the tree where it feathered away so that I can get it more crisp and then it ends up looking like it's more in the foreground. So in essence, this is really how I ended up painting these three different studies. So they're sort of like mini, they're mini studies, a mini version of watercolor practice. And this is for this version of these wintry trees. This is what my practice looked like in order for me to understand what I wanted to do and the techniques that I wanted to use in order to paint the trees of my final painting from the paint with me challenge. So I'll show you a picture here of what the paint with me challenge looked like in case you don't know what it looks like and hopefully you can see how these translated over and how this practice session helped me create the trees in the final one so i hope that this was helpful i really enjoy painting with watercolors in a really loose way and you can see how sort of loosely i paint with watercolors it's not super realistic um, and i think for my own practice i'm getting closer and closer to what it is i'm trying to achieve and the kind of look that i'm trying to go for and like i've said before i feel like i'm always on this journey of challenging myself to paint better and paint in a way that I aspire to paint in and so I hope this video has helped you if it has and you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one